It's our story. John Holland, Denver, Colorado. We never even thought about it. In 65, we just created this whole monster, this whole monstrosity. And we have a society that pays billions and billions of dollars to fund long-term care and never even asks itself. Um, it, it trusts institutions more than families. And so all that money should have been rerouted and routed originally to support everything. It wouldn't cost us anymore. You know, you could keep people at home. You could make homes accessible. You could give tax breaks or direct grants, and it would be cheaper than what we do to fix up housing. And just ordinary thinking like that 30 years ago we're having, right? And But you had to, first we had to get people out of nursing homes. First we had to criticize that system and, you know, its hopelessness, which remains today. And then we had to open the society to movement so people could be in the world. The right to be free in the world is what Atlantis was about. And there's a very great professor, you know, I never told Wade too much about things like this, but there's a professor out of Berkeley named Jacobus Tenbrook who wrote an important book on probably the best book ever written on uh, equal protection of the laws. And he wrote it uh, about racial discrimination. That's where I ran into it because of some work I was doing. I wanted to talk about the anti-slavery origins of the 14th Amendment. And I came across his articles published in the Berkeley Law Review on the right in 1954. You know, he was blind. Tenbrook was blind. And this gifted, brilliant professor had written these extraordinarily significant articles on the right to be in the world, which for me just simplified everything. That's all it ever was about, the right to be in the world. So Wade Blank was the leader of the right to be in the world. And it's for that reason that it's so obvious to me that he's the dominant figure on the national landscape and deserves his point and place in history because he understood that. And in his own personality, he resolved the, the tension. I mean, as, how amazing is it that he was beloved by disabled people everywhere? I don't think I ever saw a disabled person with the slightest concern for the credit given to Wade Blank. You know, just think about that. Here's this in a movement that needs to be led largely by disabled persons, um, the most eloquent voice and the biggest servant is able-bodied. That's what I think. And doesn't matter whether somebody fundraised money and created programs, that was important, no doubt. But the movement that was to come hasn't, has long since not, is still not been won. And uh, that's a shame that Wade didn't make it, because whatever the other people were doing, he would have figured out a strategy that they could win with and coalesce the nation around. And it all makes sense, because he even saves money. So I don't know if this is anywhere near what you're hoping for today, but um, those are some of the points or the high points that I see. The It's Our Story Project is a national effort to make disability history public and accessible. Visit us at www.itsourstory.org or on the It's Our Story Project YouTube channel.